Welcome to the second video of this snooker billiards pool tutorial. So what we had last time was something like this. We've got our edges of the snooker table done. I've kind of corrected the the length of the left edge and the right edge now. So what we will now want to get on there is some snooker balls. Um, where is my... no, that's not my diagram. My diagram is is here. Here we go. So it's <laughs> it's beginning to take shape. Now we want to do the exciting bit. We want to have some some ball objects moving around. So object oriented programming. Let's use the strength of ES6. So this is our main program. We've got a setup where we're instantiating our four edges: top edge, bottom edge, left and right, and then um, we're drawing them in the draw loop. So they're actually being drawn over and over again down here. So We've got one class of object, and we've done all this programming. Let's see if we can inherit um, this this hard work that we've done. So we're going to have a class called ball, and we're going to use the extends keyword. So this is from ES6. Extends, that just means it's like an extension. It's like an evolution of, it's going to inherit from this edge class. So this edge class is what we might call the parent class. So extends edge and then just as we did before use curly brackets to to delineate uh, the body of our of our class. So we now need a constructor function but we're going to do something slightly different because we want to make use of what's already happening up here. Our balls are going to have <laughs> an X position, a Y position, and they're going to have a dimension for size. We're just going to use diameter because we're talking about a circle now, but we can we can kind of use what's going on up here, and we're going to have a render as well, so we're going to replace that though. Right, so we're still going to have a constructor because we're going to add diameter and radius, I think. So constructor, um, in fact, let's take in, no, 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 we want to take in an X and a Y, but we now want to take in a, we'll call it diameter. Okay, now we are going to um, call the function, the constructor function of the, the superior class, the, the parent class, and we do that using super. It's kind of like the, the, the superior class, the class that we're inheriting from. And then you pass in the parameters that you need. So we just need these three. So what do these parameters... Oh, sorry, I see a mistake there. What these three parameters mean, or are going to do, are going to stand for these three. So X and Y correspond to X and Y. But diameter is now going to stand for width. So this width is going to equal W. This height nothing's going to happen there. It's just going to be null. Okay, right. That may be bad programming, I don't know. So, so we've got those three. So this pos x, this pos y, um, and this width are already taken care of now. So our ball object has already done that. So we just want to add this uh, dia equals dia, and then we're going to do a little bit of math. This radius equals this dia divided by 2. I'm having a radius because I anticipate we need to do something for collision detection. Right, we're okay for time. So now we want a render function. So, so far we've got a little bit of our own, we've added, we've extended the edge class with diameter and radius. The edge class doesn't need to know about diameter and radius, so we're not going to clutter up its constructor with that. But we do need a position um, and some kind of dimension, as said before. So we're using what, if we've already done that, we're going to use the superior class's um, labor, its its attributes. So we're sharing and organizing things more intelligently through inheritance. This is what inheritance is, extending, inheriting information from another class. But now we want to completely re replace the render function in terms of the ball. The ball's render will be different. So now, if you've got exactly the same name, it's going to replace 
what you've done up here. So we're going to do something fairly similar. So I'm going to paste this. We're definitely going to change rectangle to ellipse. That's how you draw a, a circle or an oval in P5. Position is going to be the same. Now, it does draw P5 circles, ellipses, from their centers by default. So I don't need a ellipse mode center or anything like that. And then it just takes its diameter, its diameter. So I could use, could I use WID? I could use WID here. So here's where I've, here I don't really need diameter, do I? But I'm going to have it. Okay. So we've got diameter, diameter. And then we want to make sure it's a nice color. So what should we have? Like a two, one, four, seven, snooker, one, four, seven. Stroke, stroke weight is going to be the same. So stroke is the outline. Well, let's try white, a white outline to make them look really different to the edges. And now we've done. Let's just have a look at this. So we've got an edge class, which is the parent class or superior class. And then we've got the inherited or the, the subclass that is inherited from it. So class ball extends edge. So that's how you establish the parent-child relationship. So then we have a constructor as always, take three arguments, but then we use the super keyword, remember, to that calls the constructor of its superior class. And you need to pass in uh, the parameters that you've, you've passed into its own constructor. But remember, they will stand for the first three, no matter what you've called them, that you have in the parent's constructor. And then what have we done? We've added our own attributes, so we're extending the, the attributes of edge for ball, and then we've drawn it, we've replaced the render function. So let's instantiate a ball. So we definitely want an array of balls later on. So let's do that now. So varial var balls equals square brackets to tell JavaScript we want an array. And the convention for arrays is to pluralize them. So it uh, distinguishes that variable from uh, a non-array variable. So if it's plural, it kind of reminds you that it's a, an array. How am I doing? Because I've got eight minutes, I think. Um, so we need a for loop. So we're going to say for let. That's also ES6 standard, using let instead of var. Basically, let's just say it doesn't last as long. <laughs> it's like a temporary variable. Right, so um, let i equal zero, while i is less than... Uh, one, <laughs> so we're just going to have one ball at the moment, i++, plus plus. and then inside our loop we're going to say um, balls, we're going to say balls, and then push, use the push keyword to push a new object onto the array, and what do we want to push on there? We want to push a new ball, hopefully, yes, x, y, and z, so we'll just say in the middle of the screen, which is width divided by 2, height divided by 2, that's x and y, and then its diameter, something like 32. Save that. What have I forgotten to do? I've forgotten to render the balls. And we'll do that after the edges. And instead of less than 1, we'll just say less than how many ball objects that we have put into the array. So the length of the array. There we go. So if we change this number up here, if we have 100 balls, we don't have to change anything down here. So that's more dynamic. That is better than hard coding numbers. We're using variables. So let's run now. Looks like I've still got it running somehow. What's going on? Close this down. That's scary. And oh, God, an error. I think everything, everything's OK. You can come back out. You're OK. Let's run the browser again. It's taking a while. So I've definitely got some kind of bug in here. Wow, it's it's not able to do something. Is it something wrong with my... Um, for loop? For loop, balls, push... 
one, two, three parameters, new ball, balls. Oh, push. <laughs> I'm not rendering. Oh, God, every time the draw loop was going around, I was pushing a new ball, <laughs> creating a, a monster underneath the hood of my computer. So balls, render. There we go. Um, I just wasted a lot of time there. Five minutes. No. Oh, no, we've got a bug. I anticipate this is something to do with... It's not a function. It is. Oh, no, it isn't. It's not a function of the array. I have to index each individual object on the array. Balls one dot render. Okay. Now I'm 90% confident we'll have a red ball in the middle of our snooker table. A red ball? No, I've gone for grey somehow. I've gone for grey. Um, oh yeah, I know why that is. That looks kind of cool. It looks kind of space age. Let's keep them grey. A mistake. So, oh no, <laughs> I've got four minutes. Let's get the balls moving. Right, go back to our object. So we're going to extend again the edge class. So the ball class is going to have, um, we'll call it move. So we don't have to write function. JavaScript can tell by the syntax that's a function. So Euler, this is basically Euler integration. So like a basic physics for getting stuff moving. And what you do is you add the acceleration to the velocity and then add the velocity to the position. So have I got velocity and position? No, I don't. <laughs> so let's, I've got, sorry, I've got position, not velocity. So this velocity equals create a vector and we want to do exactly the same for the acceleration. So acceleration also means a kind of force, any force that we put onto the ball. So when we start hitting them, we'll add to acceleration and velocity and position will take care of themselves. So if I leave these brackets without anything in, P5 will default them to 0, 0. So no acceleration, no velocity to begin with. But let's actually let's add a little uh, add a little spice here. I oh let's just say um, math random um, times so math random will give you a number between zero and one and then you scale it up to what you need. So if you wanted it out of a hundred you do zero one which is what's returned from math random times a hundred. Um, speed, uh, I don't know, 2, um, minus 1. <laughs> so it could be a minus number here as well. That's what I want to do. There we go. Because we're dealing with a vector, minus numbers will be up on the y. So if you've got a minus y vector component, it will be moving up. Because I'm minus on the x component here, a minus number will mean moving left. That will become clear once we've got the physics going. Um, acceleration, we won't add any forces yet. So, Euler integration, I love doing this. So we want, um, we want to add something to the velocity. So this dot vel dot add, that's a function for a P5 vector. Add, we want to add this dot acceleration. And then finally, this position, we want to add the, the resultant velocity. There we go. And then the standard way of doing Euler integration is then to zero the all the forces that you've kind of accumulated. So this acceleration, we can do that with the mult, which stands for multiply, the mult function, uh, by zero. I think I can just put. OK, that's our Euler integration. Um, this should now, we should now have a moving ball. Let's just, oh, I need to call the, the move function. So... After I've rendered the ball, we're then going to move it, please, and play. One minute, I think. I think I've got left. It's working. It's working straight away. So next thing we'll do in the next video is get the collision detection working, and then we're basically home and dry. So I'm going to do one more thing. I'm just going to call in our in our draw loop. At the start of the draw loop, to prevent the trails happening, you paint the background over everything, and then you redraw everything. 
So then it covers up any trails that the objects are going to have. So when we play this again, we should see the ball moving in a different direction, if it truly is random. Yes, there we go, so we've got snooker ball moving. Lovely, thank you again. See you maybe in the next video. <laughs> thank you very much.